I have to edit some of this out. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back. It's your girl Rosalie. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel. I got something special for you today. We've been on this NF journey. I've been blowing up YouTube with NF reactions, catching up on the journey. Still got songs to go, but NF dropped his new album. We got a happy out and I want to see what else I can find and just explore some of his brand new stuff. I'm really excited to check this out with you guys. For those of you who are uh, waiting for all kinds of other stuff, don't worry though. That's still coming. I'm almost through with the list so you can find your requests on from that you submitted through Patreon or buy me a coffee either on this channel here on Rosalie Reacts or on my channel RR Requests. And uh, I keep updates going and lots more coming from all around the world. We are all about world music and psychology. So even though this is about NF lately because of his new releases, we got lots more coming. But today I want to check out Happy. Are you ready? Make sure to subscribe and support NF. And here we go. <music> Hear me out, I know it's been a couple years Since I've reached Out and said hello, I bet you're wondering Why I keep Obsessing on and stressing all the little things I'm gonna start over how does he just always get so heavy and deep with all this stuff? I love the strings and uh, the dynamics that are being created here. We're all about psychology and music, as you know. And so, and to me, the stringed instruments coming in with that staccato and that just da 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 it, it is bills. It's exciting. But right now, the chords and notes that are being used here, to me, almost sound uplifting. It's almost exciting. A level of anticipation is what I'm perceiving. There's still a level of suspense I'm feeling, but I feel like there is something hopeful dare I say and now of course that me maybe project me projecting because I know hope was already released and that's the name of the album but there's something yeah that it doesn't just breed despair completely but excitement anticipation restlessness and the way that they compose this from the get-go is powerful the video clip itself is already interesting the little girl the woman that switch coming home to what looks like a messed home messed up home but let, let's start over. There's already so many emotions right now. Dear God, please Hear me out, I know it's been a couple years Since I've reached Out and said hello, I bet you're wondering Why I Obsessing on and stressing all the little things When I should be Living life and soaking up the memory I know I've been selfish I have no excuse to give you it's true Hanging by a thread's how I live I don't know why but feel more comfortable living in my agony watching myself esteem go up in flames acting like i don't care what anyone else thinks when i know truthfully that that's the furthest thing from how i feel but i'm too proud to open up and ask you to pick me up and pull me out this hole i'm trapped in the truth is happy yeah been this way so long it feels like something's off when i'm not depressed i got some issues that i won't address i got some baggage i ain't open yet i got some demons i should put the rest i got some traumas that i can't forget i got some phone calls i've been avoiding some family members i don't really connect with some things i said i wish i would not let slip some hurtful words that never should have left my lips some bridges burn i'm not ready to rebuild yet some insecurities i haven't dealt with yes i'll be the first to admit that i'm a lonely soul and the last to admit I need a hand to hold Losing hope, headed down a dangerous road Strange I know, but I feel most at home When I'm living in my agony Watching myself self-esteem go up in flames Acting like I don't care what anyone else thinks When I know truthfully that that's the furthest thing from how I feel But I'm too proud to open up and ask you I 
happy Don't know what's around the bend Don't know what my future is But I can't keep on living in Living in my agony Watching my self-esteem Go up in flames Acting like I don't Care what anyone else thinks When I know truthfully That that's the furthest thing From how I feel But I'm too proud to open up and ask you To pick me up and pull me out this hole I'm trapped in The truth is I need help But I just can't imagine Who I'd be if I was happy I was happy. <laughs>
it's the young boy, right? It's the version of himself. Here we see this little girl who comes home to a drunk mother. The place is wrecked. So there's still these nudges to what NF has been through and his story of an alcoholic mother or an a addict mother, right? The pain of a child, the sadness, see your parents fight, right? That those real life topics that so many of us deal with, it, even in songs like, which one was it? Wake up, right? Where you see people fighting, you see relational issues. Um, well, multiple of his songs where he's dealing with these heavy things that are so relatable. It's real. It's real. And it's not just, oh, let's talk about some real stuff that are still surface level, right? It's easy to say, oh, we're going to get real. But then it still ends up being small talk. He tackles the deep, deep, the painful, right? That stuff that needs to come up to heal so it can change. Kind of like what he says And if you want love, right? If you want love, you're going to have to be willing to change. And change is a mother. It's painful because we got to let it out. We got to let things up. And it's hard because sometimes it's easier done in a safe place. And that's scary. But we got this little girl coming home. And I won't even talk about the lyrics yet. Let's talk about the video first. We got her finding her mother and then it switches to her as an adult. That's how I'm perceiving this. And drinking herself, just that cycle, that generational cycle, kind of like what we see in, uh, what one, which one was it? We saw that in, kind of like what we saw in If You Want Love, that generational cycle of raising a daughter, right? So there's that nod to that, in my opinion. We also saw it in Let You Down right? Innate, right? Looking back at the past, looking at a future version of himself. You guys told me so interestingly in the comments for Let You Down, that old gentleman at the end, I suppose that tattoo on his arm said Nate, and then someone referred to him as Nate or Nathan. And so some of you said it could be this idea of letting his old self, his younger self drown, right? Different ways that I feel one can interpret that. And all of them are powerful ways. Um, some of you said that's this idea of letting the old self go, right? Um, it, but we see this cyclical pattern here. Again, young daughter comes home to a drunk mother. And now as an adult, as a young adult, doing the same thing, repeating that cycle, um, going around, taking her shoes off, lighting up a cigarette or a joint. I'm not sure. A child going to bed alone, right? Just this despair. It's nasty. It's gross back and forth between sleeping alone in bed to waking up on the couch. Daughter wakes up to look after her mom, eats breakfast by herself, has to take care of herself and meet her own needs. Now as an adult, making her own food sink is a mess, eating leftovers, right? Still no care, still nothing wholesome. Um, then we got fighting, switching between this young lady and her boyfriend, possibly back to the little girl who saw her parents fight. Just so flippin' relatable, that cyclical grief. It's her, it's her birthday party, everybody's singing happy birthday and smiling, and this girl is just sitting there sad, all the opposite of happy, makes a wish. And the way that beat dropped, let's talk about the music for a second, the way the beat dropped as she blew out the candles, the cadences of his singing, the singing was absolutely beautiful. There was something still joyous about this, and that's what was powerful. Like I said earlier, the staccato, the strings that anticipation that was created from the get-go even though there was elements here that were sad and the opposite of happy because of the music video and this cry to god and this this desperation even in the lyrics the composition still gave us a sense of hope it wasn't done yet it wasn't a sad ballad of doom and gloom it was it was this beautiful marriage between plea sadness despair but a hopeful composition because that's what life is about. And it's easier said than done. When we are struggling with depression or anxiety, when we have been through trauma like that and we're trying to do the hard work to overcome it. And there's this weird dance between trying to learn to be happy but also not dismissing the feelings of sadness because there's a time and place for that. Finding this weird dance between taking ownership for our healing and our trauma and moving through that, right? Not looking to other people and external factors to find healing and comfort, but at the same time, understanding that we are beings of relationship. We are creatures of relationship. There is a need for relationship and for healing. There is a healing in another person going, 
tell me how you feel. Why does this bother you? What's going on here, right? And it's hard in relationships and in families because we see the best and the worst of one another. And in the heat of the mo emotions, it's hard for us to speak to one another in a therapeutic way. It's hard to be for the other what we need them to be or what they want us to be because there's emotions and defensiveness and sensitivity and triggers and buttons. It's, it's hard, right? But we all need somebody. And it's the stance between being responsible, taking responsibility for our happiness but also when you are a person that struggles with depression or sadness or grief or trauma like this, it's also hard to get out of it by yourself, right? It's, again, the stance between taking ownership, making a choice, getting up and getting in that car like that young lady did to drive to her mother's house, making a decision like this mother did to come into the room where her daughter was celebrating her birthday, going into the room of the daughter, being present with her child, laughing, stepping up and being present as the parent, being present as the daughter and seeking reconciliation with your parent it's a choice and it takes hard work and it takes the willingness to change. But I like the fact that there was also this plea to God in this because for some people it might come easy. Oh, just do it. Just get over yourself. Just do it. Right. But in the heat of the moment, even those people who are quick to say, oh, you just do it yourself, find, you know, joy and peace in yourself. At least from my own experience, when they're in the middle of their emotions, their anger, their frustrations, it's not easy to stay calm and cool. Right. Even even those who want to say, oh, just, you know find your own peace, create your happiness. When they're actually angry or hurt, they can't just snap out of it. Emotions are powerful. They're hard just to turn off and on. So it's this dance between taking ownership, doing what you need to do, but also asking for help because we're relational beings. And this plea in this song is just, to me, is that. And then you have this, this mother showing up for her daughter, showing up and making a difference. It's almost like perhaps deep down what NF wished his mother would have done, what many of us wish our parents would have done to make that choice, to, to choose happiness, to choose life in their words and their actions, to choose life and not addiction, not death and suffering and being present for their children, right? It could be to a degree of wishful thinking, but it can also be this reminder to all of us that we do still have the choice. As long as we're breathing, we have the choice. And so you have this young lady repeating this cycle. And what I love so much, which is so powerful is... When I think of the search and I think of, no, actually, I think of leave me alone. I think in the search, you see an F in the cart cradled up legs, he head between his legs as, you know, he's handed the, um, the white clothing. He's given a choice, right? Is he going to stay in that cart? Is he going to keep wearing black? Is he going to change into his, the white attire? And then in Leave Me Alone, he hands a few of those balloons over and balloons over. And the last few images of that video, even, you don't quite see him handing them over. He's really close and it looks like he's about to. But to me, at least, I perceived it as this open end. We still don't quite know. Because it's, for one, it takes a lot of courage to let go and release, to forgive, to break generational crap, to find healing, to ask for help. In another one of his songs, is it... Uh, why I'm, it might be, or one of the others, he speaks of pride, right? He personifies pride as he's done with anger and sadness and uh, uh, um, fear. And he personifies pride and talks about that struggle of wanting to do it all by himself, right? It takes so much courage to reach out to other people and say, hey, this is hard for me, but I, I need this. God, I need you. Hey, people, I need you. And so there's this hesitation to release the balloons and give them off to somebody else as we see in Leave Me Alone. There's this battle as we see in those black balloons being weighed down, his sadness, his depression, his trauma, his pain, his OCD, whatever it is for you, right? It's so hard to release those balloons because they become part of who we are. And I think sometimes part of the fear in choosing to be happy and letting go of our pain is that we are afraid we don't know who we are if we let it go. And that's even what I see here in the lyrics when it says, hear me out. I know it's been a couple of years, which is interesting because I think his latest music release was also a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken, 2021. I've reached out and said, hello, I bet you're wondering why I keep obsessing on and stressing all the little things. To me, that's relatable. You know, it's this weird dance between learning that your feelings matter and understanding yourself, your body, hormones, seasons in life, but also understanding the other flip side of it which is stressing about worrying about all the little things and it's this honest dialogue you know for many of us that's relatable even when it comes to faith and talking to God right that sometimes there's this radio silence we feel like we can't hear God we don't feel like anybody can hear us we feel lonely and isolated and it's this this feeling of hey it's me I know it's been a while 
when I should be living life and soaking up the memories. And this is also interesting because that is very therapeutic when we learn to live life and we learn that the past is over. We can't go back as much as we want to to change it. As much as we worry about the future, we can't change it. All we have is the here and now. That's, as they say, the gift, the present. And that would be the ultimate therapy against death, anxiety, and despair in our existential fears is to make good memories, not to hedonistically seek pleasure all the time, right? That could be a way of not trying to deal with our death anxiety. We end up being empty and miserable because we just party and run from one fix to the next. The other extreme is just being miserable and sad all the time, right? Uh, the other extreme is trying to defy death, right? And do crazy things all the time, adrenaline rush 24-7, right? Is this weird balance between day to day that there's beauty in the mundane and beautiful moments in the exciting adventures of life but it's the memories that make our life worthwhile and soaking it in while we are here i know i've been selfish i have no excuse to give you it's true and i love musically speaking how he sung so beautifully the harmonies in this composition how the drums kicked in and the guitar and it just gave this really upbeat hopeful vibe as as the composition built i love how he broke up the cadences of his of his musical flow, the melody, the harmonies, like I said, but even the the way that the sentences and the rhymes and the poetry of these lyrics were broken up rhythmically was beautiful. Hanging on by a thread's how I live. I don't know why, but I feel more comfortable living in my agony, watching my self-esteem go up in flames, acting like I don't care what anybody else thinks when I know truthfully that's the furthest thing from how I feel. Can you relate to some of this? is powerful and so personal. I'm too proud to open up and ask you to pick me up and pull me out this hole I'm trapped in. The truth is I need help, but I just can't imagine who I'd be if I was happy. Like I've said in other videos, sometimes we so over-identify with our sadness and our agony, we don't know who we'd be without it. And it's this fear of letting go of the balloons because we're afraid that if we let go of the pain, if we let go of that person that hurt us, if we forgive, if we release them, if we forgive, like he said, I forgive my mom in hope. Who are we without that, right? Does that mean that? I think for some, and this is where we get, you know, into the psychology, part of it is a fear that we lose part of ourselves because that's part of our story. And I think sometimes people are afraid of letting go of the pain because they're afraid that it negates and erases what's been done to them. And that has shaped us. If you've been hurt, that's shaped you. If you've done certain things or things have been done to you and you're hurting, that has shaped your story, that has shaped you as a person. And if you were to forgive and let go and release that and learn to be happy and savor the beautiful things in your life, sometimes I think, as I said, there's this fear of losing part of ourself, but I think there's also this fear that it would no longer exist even when it comes to grief when you lose someone that you love someone dies right by letting go and forgiving them for leaving right and i know that sounds crazy because a lot of times it's not the person's fault for dying but sometimes underneath there's still this anger and this pain of how could you leave us right even if they didn't choose to leave through suicide or addiction and even that is more complex than just choosing to leave right addiction is a really horrible beast even if they died through natural causes or a sickness that was out of their control, if you will, there's still sometimes this anger and this sadness of why did you leave, right? Even though, and we might feel guilty for feeling that way because it's not their fault, right? But they left, they're gone. And so by releasing that pain, by forgiving them or forgiving ourselves, sometimes I think there's this fear of, but then it's like it never happened. Then it's like that person is permanently gone. And it's our way of holding on to that person, the, their memory. By saying, okay, all the memories I have with this person are mostly negative or a lot of it's painful. But if I were to let go of that pain, I'm letting go of that person. And that's a part of me. And that may mean that it never happened. And who's going to remember my story? Who's going to let them live on, right? It's almost like we let people and memories live on through our pain. And if we let go of the pain, we're afraid that it's no longer valid, that it didn't happen. And that's not true. If you forgive yourself and you forgive those who've hurt you, and I need to preach to the choir here. That doesn't mean that what they did never happened. It means that you're no longer being poisoned, that you're no longer wasting your life in misery and agony. And that's hard because it's painful. It's easier said than done to just forgive. It's easier said than done to just let go. That There's never a just let go when it comes to deep things like this. Those balloons are heavy. They're being weighed down. They're dark. They're not happy-go-lucky birthday balloons. They're not balloons we just release in joy. When we deal with death, 
not just physical death of losing someone or preparing ourselves for our own death, when we're talking trauma and pain and abuse and betrayal and this seasons of disillusionment where we are come face to face with crap. I don't know. That is not what I signed up for, right? This is way harder than I thought it would be. Be it marriage, raising kids, careers, our identity, who we are as human beings. We grow up and we're like, crap, what the heck is this? And and what in the unicorn farts is this? I didn't sign up for this. So I'm talking death, not just physically or loss of a loved one, but the death of our hopes and dreams, the death of our expectations. When we come face to face with that and we realize some of that can never come back, it's drowning, it's going, it's being buried, it's going up in flames. It's really hard because our pain is what still keeps us connected to that. Our suffering is what we still have in common with that person or that event. And I think that's part of the reason psychologically why it's hard sometimes to be happy. Sometimes it could be guilt. Like we feel like we don't deserve to be happy, as he says to Nate, right? It's hard for me to relate to you when he sings to his younger self and Nate because he feels like he doesn't deserve it, the empathy. It's been way too long. I feel like something's off when I'm not depressed. Oh my gosh, do you ever have that feeling where you feel like something's not right if something's not going wrong? Or when something is going right, you feel like the shoe's about to drop. You can't fully enjoy it or you try to dampen it because you feel like, well, at least I won't be too disappointed when the other shoe drops and crap hits the fan. So I might as well not be too happy in life right now. I got some issues I won't address. I got baggage I ain't open yet. And that too, to me, lets us in a little bit on his journey isn't done. He's healing, he's growing, but as long as he lives, he's going to be dealing with stuff. This is not done, but he's not let us in on everything that there is. And that is part of hope. That is part of, that is a good motto to have in life, to understand it is an ongoing journey. And we can maybe be a little bit more relieved of this unending pressure to be perfect if we realize we're always going to be growing and that's okay. That's part of hope is that in the pain and in that baggage that we're trying to unpack bit by bit, there is still hope, but it is a process. I got some demons I should put to rest. I got some traumas I can't forget. That's another thing, right? As we heal, sometimes we think that we have to forget it now. We got to move on and be done. Letting go doesn't mean it never happened. Letting go doesn't mean you just forget and move on. It's an ongoing healing process. I got some phone calls I've been avoiding, family members I don't really connect with. And that works with the movie clip and the daughter as an adult now driving to see her mother crying in her in pain. And I feel like there's different ways to, for us to personally interpret that. Is she crying because of her own agony and inability to be happy? Crying because of some of her painful memories with her mother, right? Crying because it's so hard to forgive. Some things I said I wish I would have not let slip. Relatable. Hurtful words that never should have left my lips. Relatable. Bridges burned. I'm not ready to rebuild yet. Ooh, snap. Insecurities I haven't dealt with. Yes, I'll be the first to admit I'm a lonely soul. And the least to admit... I need a hand to hold. The first to admit I'm lonely, the last to admit I need a hand to hold. Losing hope. And that's interesting too. The album's titled Hope. He's let us in on hope. But it's encouraging for me to see, wait a minute, this is not, hope is not just a matter of, hey, everything's fine now, right? You lose hope as you're holding on to hope. You lose hope as you're healing and growing, heading down a dangerous road. Strange, I know, but I feel most at home when I'm, and it goes back to the course, living in my agony. And then in the bridge, it says, don't know what's around the bend. Don't know what my future is, but I can keep on living. And then it goes into the chorus again in agony. And it ends with who I'd be if I was happy. And that tags powerful, way deeper than what I was ready for. And I really like it because it's not just this, hey guys, here's been my whole struggle and you've seen me in, uh, in Nate and you've seen me in how could you leave us and you've seen me and leave me alone. And But now there's hope and hey, everything's fine again. You know what I mean? It's It's not that easy. It's not that black and white. It's a process, but it's a really honest conversation. Shoot, it's messed me up. Boah. What did you think? I want to see... Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to just. I think do bit by bit. React to the songs as he as he um, releases mu music videos. Music, <laughs> music. The German came out. La musica. Um, as he keeps um, releasing videos for his album, I'm gonna have to uh, check it out. He put out Gone Audio Pandemonium. Oh, this is gonna be so good. There's so many good stuff. I can't wait. I don't know if I wanna. Mm, I don't know if I want to listen to it yet. The third song is Careful. Oh, gosh. The third song is Careful. The fourth song is Mama. I don't know, guys. 
I'm going to stop here because I don't want the video to get too long, but I'm going to ask you, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to put a video out where I re react to and listen to the various tracks? Or would you like me to wait till the videos come out for these various songs and then react to them? Let me know in the comments below. This was powerful. Subscribe. Make sure to support NF. Subscribe to his channel. And remember, we're all about world music, so lots more from around the world coming. Stay patient with me. See you on the next ride. Ayo! Hey